Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So I thought I would make an extensive, the most extensive, should I even say, pros and cons of living in Thailand video that you could ever find on YouTube. And if you're someone that's new to my channel, I did make a video a couple of days ago talking about how I've managed to live in Thailand for over four years and if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link for it up above and you can check that out now in case you're interested in that so yes I have a lot of experience with living in Thailand so I think I'm a really good person to making these pros and cons of Thailand video and I have experience with living in different parts of Thailand and the pros and cons that I'm going to go through is the cost of living visas for being able to stay here long term what it's like for night's life, food to eat out, and many other different things as well. So make sure you watch this video from start to finish. And I'm gonna try and do my best to put as much information into this that could be helpful for different people. Some of these things are gonna be a pro for you, some of them are gonna be a con for you. Some of them, they're just not a factor for you to consider at all about whether you should live in Thailand or not. So number one, which is a huge factor for so many people living in Thailand, the cost of almost everything is very, very cheap. If you want to rent an apartment or a house, different parts of Thailand, it will vary how much it's gonna cost you a month. And if you want like a really upmarket, westernized place, it's obviously gonna cost way more than a simple, a basic place. So depending on how much luxury you want, how big you want a place, is gonna depend on how much you're gonna cost. But if you live in Chiang Mai, Thailand, on the outskirts with like Thai people, in a basic studio apartment with no aircon, just a fan and no TV, it would cost you around 1,200 baht. I've actually gone and looked at some places like that years ago. But if you live in the city, which most people wanna live in, specifically in Chiang Mai, you can easily get places for like 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 baht or more a month. If you're gonna live in Niemann Heyman, which is like the place to be seen, that it's gonna cost way more. And what I'm gonna do is for, for all the prices I put in baht, I'm gonna put the USD prices here. And things for like gas. I have a 150cc Honda Click and to fill it up costs 140 baht and that normally lasts me around a week. So gas is really, really cheap. Food to buy from the shop except for imported westernized food items is super, super cheap. Eating out at restaurants is cheap and just pretty much everything is super, super cheap. So if you wanna live somewhere and save a lot of money, especially if you're someone from America or England, Australia, New Zealand, your just general monthly expenses are just gonna be way, way less, which is the reason why so many people come here younger and older. Number two, which this is not gonna to apply to everyone, but it definitely applies for people such as myself from the United Kingdom. Here, in comparison to England, renting an apartment or a house is way, way more simpler and it's a way faster process because for example in my country you normally have to one put down a lot of money down for a deposit a lot of time you don't end up getting it back the deposits cost way 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 less here in Thailand like significantly less and I normally find in England that I have to have a guarantor which is someone that is basically earning a lot of money and if I break anything or anything goes wrong they've got that as a backup and they can get money from them and so forth and in England you have to have checks, you don't hear how it works here is, you just go there, check out the place, if you want it, put a deposit down, and that's it. Then you can move in as soon as they say you can move in, which is a really, really good thing because it can be really hard for people to actually get a place in England. Normally it's gonna cost a lot a month, and then to go through the checks and everything is a very long drawn out process and a lot of people fail the process. Number three, which is very appealing to people that come from countries where the climates are colder almost all of the time, or all of the time to be specific. And that is in Thailand, the weather is pretty much hot all year round. Different parts of Thailand, like where I am now, Koh Phangan, Thailand, is definitely way hotter than Chiang Mai, Thailand. I'd say Phuket, Thailand is even hotter than here. It's more like desert type of like humidity and weather there. 
I really, really like it. But not everyone likes that. And what I say is, yes, when you first move to Thailand, if you come from a cold climate, it's gonna seem really hot. But as you get adapted to it, as long as you're spending time outside quite a bit in the weather and not just staying stuck inside a building with aircon all the time, your body's gonna adapt. And when I first came here as well, yes, I was getting burnt, but now I can spend loads of time in the sun because my skin has adapted to it. And so many people, especially older people, they find that they suffer with like, pain and inflammation in their body especially in the cold season and it can cost them quite a lot just to keep the electric and gas on which a lot of people cannot afford especially older people in england that have a pension so yeah and we know if you do your research up online climates that are not at well as hot as thailand or other specific tropical climates and where you have less sunlight hours the rate of mental health issues skyrocket and other certain things as well so coming from a health perspective with the weather it's just going to be way better for your health overall as well with the weather so that is a win-win situation the next one which is really good you're not going to find this in all places in asia but you do in thailand is around communication most thai people do speak complete fluent english or quite a bit of english so even if you don't know how to speak thai which i do recommend learning as much thai as you can because it's nice to just be able to communicate with thai people with their own language but if you're someone that doesn't know any or doesn't know much or especially when you're new to move into thailand it's not something you need to be concerned about because most of them you're going to be able to communicate in english and have no issues with that unlike if you go to places like south korea i became aware of this one very recently through some videos i was watching online hardly anyone speaks english there whatsoever so yeah it's really good that you don't need to be concerned about not speaking much thai whatsoever and for anyone wondering when the cons are coming the cons will come after i've done all of the pros and the next one is that the majority of Thai people in comparison to Westerners in Western countries are so friendly and calm and laid back especially this is something because they follow the Buddhist way and I've never really seen no I've never actually seen any Thai person go into a state of road rage on the road I've only ever seen Westerners do that as well so I just like that they seem to be less stressed and just more easy going there is an exception for this if you go to places like Patong in Phuket where it's just a really a busy party area you're normally finding areas such as there that the Thai people or the Burmese people because there's a lot of Burmese workers in Thailand are necessarily not going to be as friendly but it's understandable why because they have to deal with a lot of foreigners especially backpackers that are not nice to them and don't treat them very well so it's understandable why they may not be the friendliest because I wouldn't necessarily be if I was in their situation as well and the next one which is a huge thing for digital nomads which there's a lot of expat digital nomads in Thailand is in many areas in Thailand the internet is very very good I've lived in Koh Phangan, Phuket and Chiang Mai and I've always just made sure when I'm going to stay somewhere that I check the internet speed before I use it and even if you're not a digital nomad you're just someone that uses internet a lot which a lot of people do nowadays yeah that's obviously a really good thing and that's why Chiang Mai Thailand more specifically is one of the digital nomad capitals of the world because in it's really fast and it's really cheap to live there so that's a really really good thing unlike if you go to places like Philippines the internet is just absolutely awful there and a lot of other places in Asia are as well and this is one of the main reasons why I live here because I'm someone that works online and the next one this is not going to apply to every area in Thailand but if you're in places such as Phuket or Koh Phangan or Koh Samui there's going to be loads of amazing tropical beaches such as this one that I'm walking across at the moment and I'm someone that absolutely loves amazing tropical beaches and they're in abundance especially on the islands in Thailand and they are just the type of beaches that you'd normally see in films and a lot of people only dream coming to so if you get to live in certain parts of Thailand you get access to these at all different times and if you're someone that's seen into nudist beaches there are nudist beaches and non nudist beaches so yeah dependent on what type of beaches you want there's a variety of different beaches next up there is so many other 
people that live in all different parts of Thailand that are foreigners as well. Especially a lot of English speaking people, Russian people, German people, and many other people from many other different countries as well. So wherever you're from, if you want to find a lot of other people from your country or like money people, there's so many different people that are in so many different things. So you can find your community if you want to find it. You may have to live in different parts of Thailand to meet certain different people, but yeah, there is so many people here. So if that's something that's a huge factor for you, it's not something you need to be worried about because if you go to certain parts in Asia, there's not going to be nowhere near as many foreigners there. And you might feel lonely and isolated, especially if you cannot connect with locals and speak a lot of their language. And the next one is another one around food. There's so many amazing different restaurants to eat out at. There's Thai restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Indian restaurants, like Middle Eastern restaurants, junk food restaurants, uh, whatever food you're into, there's just a wide variety of different foods to eat out at so many different amazing restaurants. One pro I thought I'd add, and this isn't going to apply to everyone, but if you're someone that eats a vegan diet, specifically Chiang Mai Thailand and Koh Phangan Thailand and Bangkok Thailand are some of the most popular places in the world for vegans to travel to to eat because there's so much abundance of vegan food to eat at so many different vegan restaurants and also restaurants that just offer vegan options. So depending where you're going, some places are gonna be way cheaper than others. And what I'd say is such as Koh Phangan Thailand living here, the food normally costs more here than it does in Chiang Mai, Thailand, for example. So different locations are gonna cost different amounts of money and you can spend extortionate amounts of money, especially go to places that are really high end restaurants, just like in most places you live. Or you can go to restaurants that are more for locals or just cheaper Thai style places. And obviously Thai food is normally gonna be the cheapest in comparison to any other food that you could eat out at restaurants. The next one, depending on what you're into, there's so many different things to just do in Thailand. Whether you're into hikes or going to beaches or going out partying, which yeah, that's gonna add on to the next thing I'm gonna say in a moment, or whatever you're into, dancing classes. Yeah, there's just so much going on in Thailand, but you're gonna have more access to things to do more specifically in places such as Bangkok, Thailand, Chiang Mai, Thailand. I'd also say Phuket, Thailand as well, but more so Bangkok and Chiang Mai, Thailand. And then that brings me onto the next one, which is the nightlife. It's not something that I necessarily have dug deep into at all because I'm someone that doesn't party anymore. But if you're someone that wants a really, really good nightlife and party life, I know so many people that are into that and Thailand is one of those destinations where a lot of people come to have some really good night experiences and party and just find other people that are into that type of thing as well. So if that's your sort of thing, there's loads of that going on. So many different clubs you could go to, or if you're in Koh Phangan, Thailand, there's so many different like half moon festivals, dark moon festivals and parties and events and that as well. And the last one for pros. Some people are not going to agree with me on this one, but everyone has different experiences, many different things. Mine's been a positive one. I know so many other people that have positive experiences as well. If you are interested in having a relationship with a local Thai woman, there's so many amazing ones out there that just want to look after foreigners that they're with so, so well. And yeah, when I was with a Thai girl before, it's one of the best experiences that I've ever, ever had. She just wanted to look after me in so many ways and thrive for me in so many ways. And yeah, some people are going to say, well, most Thai girls, they just want to find a Westerner to marry and then they can just get loads of money from them. Yes, there is situations where Thai girls just want to be with men for their money. There's many men in Phuket that get Thai brides. There's an option for that if you want that. I'm not going to go and detail it. I don't have any experience with it, but you can research it up online. But there's many girls that just want to be with a foreigner, which is known as a Farang in Thai, because they do just love them and they do connect with them really well. So yeah, there's some Thai girls that just want you for your money and there's other girls that actually want you for who you are. So depending on what you're looking for, there's a variety of different girls out there that want different things. And yeah, there's some people that say they have bad experiences with Thai girls, or what I say is normally, just as with any girl, if you treat them wrong, then you're gonna get it back. It's called karma. What comes around, goes around. And yeah, if you go 
and meet a girl in the wrong place for the wrong reasons then you might end up in a sticky situation as well so just have your head screwed on and just be very aware of what you're looking for in a Thai girl and whether you want one that's for your money or wants to be with you just because they actually like you and I know of so many different Thai girls that are with Farangs and they do actually earn all their own money and they don't get any money from their partner whatsoever which I think is a really good thing because it can be really dangerous for a Thai girl to rely solely on a foreigner for money and then if they end it's like what's she going to do she could end up in a really bad situation if you're someone that is a fruit lover or on a raw vegan diet because there's many people that come here to travel for that it has some of the most highest quality fruit in the world and actually one last thing that I forgot to add on the pros list that I just thought of now is as with many places that you could live if you want to live in a big busy city that has way more things to do and way more accessibility to things to buy and more places to shop and more shopping malls and so forth you have the choice between like Chiang Mai and Bangkok and if you want a quieter place with more nature that's more tranquil more serene and just way calmer with less pollution and that then you could come to somewhere such as Koh Phangan, Thailand so yeah different parts of Thailand are gonna meet different needs and I know some people that love to live in certain areas and other people don't so yeah it just depends on your own needs so work out what yours are and then you can decide upon which part of Thailand is the best for you to live and it might just be good for you to come and try out some of the different places that I've mentioned or another place that I haven't mentioned see how it is for you if you like it stay there if you don't move on to another part in Thailand and see if you can find somewhere that is more suitable for you the next one I've actually put under pros and cons and this is to do with visas so if you want to stay in Thailand long term you need to have a visa there's so many different visas that you can get if you want me to make a video to go into as much detail as I possibly can on this subject let me know down below and I can make that for you as soon as possible so if you're over 50 you can get a retirement visa so for me to go and explain this to you in as short as way as I possibly can and I'm gonna sit down here for a minute this camera is actually really really heavy to hold up and walk around with the whole time got some newsy scooters going along there yeah with visas yeah you can get visas on arrival which give you 30 days you can send for 30 days here but with most visas that most people get that stay here long term they get tourist visas which means after a certain period of time you need to go out of the country go to another country and get a visa which is going to cost you money so yeah some people see it as a negative thing because they want to stay in a country as long as possible and not have to do loads of visa runs but i just accept it it's just how it is and i actually like visa runs this is why i'm saying it could be a pro or con every time i have to do a visa run i just go to another country that i want to go to and i get to explore that country and have a really nice like traveling experience so i don't see it as a bad thing and yeah the pros that can be with this depend on how much money you got you can buy like one year volunteer visas or educational visas there's so many noisy Thai kids around here I think they're leaving now which is good um, you also can buy visas through the government five year or ten year elite visas the longer the visas are the more they cost you can research up those online so it depends how you see it some people complain about it some people don't complain about it I don't complain about it it just is what it is yes you could go to other countries such as let's think Laos or even Malaysia and it's way way easier to get visas Thailand has got stricter and stricter and stricter with them but I've been here on back-to-back -back tourist visas for just over four years never had any issues with it some people say there are issues that you can have with it I've heard some people have issues but it's a very rare thing to happen but as long as you've got money you can stay here long term with visas money speaks so to speak literally the next one which some people are gonna see this as not a bad thing some people are gonna like it less than others and so forth and that is the rainy season so at specific times throughout the year you're gonna have the rainy season and some places are worse than others I've been in Koh Phangan, Chiang Mai and Phuket at various different times when there's been rainy seasons the worst place was Phuket it pretty much rains almost all the time so there's no way I'd be there during the rainy season you can search up online and find out which parts of Thailand have the rainy season I found when it's going on in Chiang Mai, Thailand and Koh Phangan, Thailand yeah it rains at certain points but a lot of time it isn't raining so it's not a huge issue at least in these different places in Thailand so it doesn't necessarily bother me normally when it's raining I just spend a bit more time indoors which is fine because I have a lot to do indoors I work online so yeah it 
it's just absolutely fine. It's just one of those things that's fine. And to be honest, England has way more rain than here all the way out, well, all the way throughout the year. So it's not an issue for me at all, but it could be for a lot of other people. The next one is burning season, which some people say this is not bad at all. But if you're someone that cares about your health at all, and you're just very aware of the negative effects of the burning season, then yeah, this is not gonna be a good thing. So the burning season happens from about late January till about late April. It does change from year to year, but that is generally how it is at the moment. And they are burning rice fields, corn fields, soy fields, and everything else. And the air quality, more specifically in Chiang Mai becomes so worse. You can look online at the AQI, which is the air quality index, and it just gets so bad. Normally around 250, 350, 450, which is really high. What I'd say is Bangkok doesn't get nowhere near as bad as Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai seems to be the worst, but all I do, and this is one of the reasons why I'm here, I don't actually need to be here anymore because it's past the burning season month now, is I just moved to Koh Phangan, Thailand. You can move to Koh Samui and many other different places in the south, but you really don't want to be in the north during that time. They actually warn people to stay in the majority of the time and only go out when it's absolutely necessary. And this is a warning by the government. So yeah, it's not a really good thing. I wish it didn't happen. Maybe it'll get banned in the future, but I don't see that happening anytime soon, but I hope that it does in the future. This one is again, one of those things you just have to accept. Pretty much with any country you're going to live in, there's going to be pros and cons. So, um, lack of products. So, product availability is not the best. So, yes, you can get a lot of imported westernized goods, but a lot of time you're not going to be able to find a lot of things that you'd want to have access to, that you'd have easy access to in the Western world. And if you do find it here, it's going to have a massively jacked up price for obvious reasons, import tax, shipping and so forth. So that is a huge downfall for me. And something that I'm gonna to link to that is like, there's no Amazon or eBay here. Amazon and eBay is such an amazing thing. I do a lot of online shopping, a lot of people do. So yeah, I don't have access to a lot of things, which then if I do actually need something from another country and I really, really do need it, I have to pay quite a bit of shipping to get it shipped here and it obviously ends up costing me a lot more money than if I could buy it in the country that is actually from and get a ship from eBay or Amazon. But the thing is, the general costs every month that I have are way, way less. So if I do need to import something, it's fine. What I'd recommend with this one, I could go into more details on this in another video, is when you're getting stuff shipped, get someone to ship it to you and get them to put less than a 50 USD value on it, then you stop getting import tax fees and everything else. And it, trust me, it works time and time again. I've done this for four years. So that's just a little tip for you. That is literally it for the cons. I tried to sit in there. Well, I did sit there for ages and try and think of cons, but pff, they're the only ones that I could come up with. Like I said, other people are gonna have way more cons than me, but it just depends on what you're looking for, what your experience is. Like I said, I've tried to cover as many different pros and cons as possible for all different types of people so they can make a really good informed choice on whether Thailand is a place that they want to be long term and live in. But yeah, what I will say is the people that normally complain the most are older people that are like 50, 60 year old or above. But they seem to complain about a lot of things and not just stereotyping and saying all of them are like that, but it's just a reoccurring theme that I've seen time and time again. There's a lot of older expats that just complain about it. And it's just them being a pessimistic, negative person. It's just their perception upon pretty much everything in life. So they're always gonna be complaining about something. So yeah, it's just how you look at things. And for me, this is why I live here because the pro to con ratio, the pros are way higher and the, the cons are just, cons even are just, hardly any what service. It just makes sense for me to be here. Will I maybe move in the future? Maybe. But for me, it's been perfect for me for the last years. So that is it from me. If you'd like me to make any more videos with anything to do about living in Thailand or life in Thailand as a whole, let me know down below and make them for you as soon as possible. If you like the video, like it down below, give us a thumbs up and any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to share this with others and make sure to subscribe 
And if you are going to subscribe, you want to be notified of when I have new videos coming up. You click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. And I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.